Each week on Check Please, we travel throughout the Chicagoland area to get a taste of three different restaurants recommended and reviewed by three regular people. On our last episode of the season, we always feature a compilation of restaurants that we've visited over the years on Check Please. And this week, we're taking a savory look at the sumptuous scene on the city's south side. So coming up, we're taking you from 16th Street to 95th Street, and we'll see everything from sublime seafood to terrific tacos to crunchy chicken and waffles that stirs up part of the pride of the south side. Our journey begins as a criminal defense attorney makes the case for his Hyde Park pick. A customer service rep takes us on a ride to her favorite fish shack. But first, a program director leads us to 63rd Street for a one-of-a-kind taste of the islands. Coming here, you just entered a new a world of a new culture that you perhaps have never heard of. This is the only place you could have this type of cuisine practically in the whole United States, certainly in the Midwest. Our dishes are so unique and it's the best part is that it's family run. Their chicken sauce. Every person that comes in here, I try to explain the culture to them, where we came from, why this food is so unique, what life is like in Belize, different types of things that you can only get here. The signature dish, which is the Huda Baruru with Falamao, features is like a coconut milk fish soup that comes with ripe plantain on the side and it's it's a delicious meal. If you happen to come on an evening where there is live music happening, you're gonna see traditional cultural music. <laughs> that in itself creates the uniqueness about this particular restaurant and about the Garifuna people. I used to work in that neighborhood and it's unique. There, over there is not very many sit-down restaurants and when you come in, it's not fried, it's not Americanized Caribbean food. It's like, I guess I never had Belizean food before. I think it's authentic. At least all they tell me is authentic. <laughs> we started with the plantain chips and the salsa and the guac, which was really good. Wasn't the guac mm -hmm. was so good with the plantain. It's yeah. a unique That's thing, so right? Plantain delicious. chips. I've yeah, yeah, never heard of that before. I do love plantain chips. When I was there, I felt like it was definitely like we had escaped to this um, new experience, like like I was in a completely different world. There is a they very were much staycation aspect. Yeah, right? and, yeah, and, and, yeah, yeah. and there was like the music they were playing was Griffin of music, and you know, and the food was very, very different than anything I would I would normally eat, but it was delicious. I mean, the conch fritters were incredible, the stewed shrimp was mm -hmm. delicious, and just even the way that they did the beans and rice mixed mm -hmm. together. Kind of a cross between like Latin American, Caribbean, and African mm -hmm. yeah. food, and I'd never had any of those three things isolated or together, you know, mm -hmm. but I thought it was, I loved it. I thought it was great. There's a good mix of people that you go further down. There's a lot of Mexican restaurants further down mm -hmm. 63rd. One time I went in there, the alderman was there. So it seems to be like the people who are involved in the community mm -hmm. really come out and support. It made There's me more. feel like I really wanted to go to Belize. And we had, we had a really good time. Traditionally, Chicago had a lot of shrimp shacks, I call them. Probably 30 of us back uh, 30, 40 years ago. We opened up in 1948. My father and my uncle were the original owners. It's a family-owned business. We smoke a wide variety of fish. We have salmon, sable, sturgeon, eel, whitefish, catfish, and our house uh, specialty is our smoked shrimp. If it swims, we smoke it. enjoy, you know, they, they see this little little shrimp shack with a little orange roof and they come in, they get the whiff of the odor and they get pumped up and they get excited and then they start looking around and they go outside and look at the bridge and look at everything that's around here and it's just a, it's a whole experience along with the food. I love this store. It's, uh, it, it, it gives me a feeling of my father and uncle still being here. It's a, it's a family run store and our employees are, are our family. Usually I've gotten sea scallops, the last time I went we got bay scallops and they were sweet and mm. you know tender, they were perfectly cooked. And I just got the stuffed shrimp, mm. they're humongous, they're stuffed with cheese. I got a half order which comes with four, 
I could have eaten a million. <laughs> <laughs> and it was one of those places I had not really heard of it before. Mm -hmm. And we're driving, and we're driving, and we, we get off the Skyway, and suddenly we're in the middle of nowhere, and I'm like, okay, I know it's supposed to be kind of remote. And there it is. We see it. We pull up, you know. Yeah, but yeah. you walk in and you're, you're inundated with the smoked fish. I mean, you can't miss it when you walk in. It's there in the case and you see it. How about the one, uh, that one? There you go. They have their own smokehouse. And so a big part of the menu is smoked fish. And then they have made-to-order fried fish. I went with the shrimp and then they also do, I had a pepper garlic salmon. I think it's just a great spot. It's so pretty. It's almost industrial pretty. It's almost like New England, like you could be in Maine sort of along the river. It was terrific. Oh, the good. food was unbelievable. Excellent. The food was perfect. It's just really good food. It's really good fish. We try and be intentional about our sandwiches. You know, we, we use a little bit better products. We use a local prosciutto out of Iowa. We use a organic ham for our ham sandwiches out of Wisconsin. Our, our roast beef is from the same organic farm in Wisconsin. So it's the same thing you're familiar with, a roast beef sandwich, but it's it's been a little more uh, thought through. You know, we work really hard on keeping our customer service at a, at a high level, and we try and remember people, remember what they like, you know, reach out to people, you know, make, it, make an effort. And so that's why people love it. Yeah, the food's great, but they just like the experience of coming here. The way that I've heard us described for the most part, and I really enjoy it, is, oh, z and I love that place. And sometimes it's hard for them to nail down why, you know, but it's, it's a great experience. They enjoy what they have. We try and do everything we can as best we can. Take care, take care. Bye. Bye. I work in the neighborhood, and I usually don't like to bring my lunch. Uh, I want something quick, but really good quality. And it's on University of Chicago's campus, mm -hmm. so you get that student uh, population. They, you know, kind of come in, come out. It's right on 57th Street. Um, there's a great bookstore right nearby, but it's a great sandwich joint. They got uniquely crafted sandwiches. It feels like a local organic eatery, real fresh ingredients. I got the Godfather, which anything that you want to put prosciutto <laughs> on, I'm all about eating. And it was thinly sliced, super fresh. It had um, fresh mozzarella, a basil, mixed greens, and like a drizzle of balsamic on a crunchy French baguette. And I was absolutely in heaven. I went with the pig on a pretzel. So it was smoked ham Good choice. on a pretzel roll uh, with cheese, and it was just out of this world. I brought my daughter too. She went with one of those uh, custom made ones. Finicky, like you wouldn't believe. So I thought, well, let me bring her, let me see how she's gonna like it. She loved it. I I'd say if you go to Zaleski and Horvath, you've gotta get their cocoa dusted almonds, okay? It's a great <laughs> dessert, you buy them, it's on one of the you know, specialty I shelves. Have a black and white cookie. Black and white cookie, delicious. It's really a gem in that high park area. We've already taken you from 95th Street to 63rd, down to 57th, and coming up, special ed instructor takes us to the near south side for some upscale treats. The teacher says you'll always get royal treatment at his King Drive destination. And up first, we're off to 84th and Pulaski for one of Chicago's most iconic pizzerias. <music> We're in the Ashburn District, uh, 8400 South Pulaski, called Vito and Nick's after my grandfather and my dad, being in business 93 years. The neighborhood has changed. That doesn't stop anyone. Everybody comes back. They all feel like this is home. And it is home to a lot of people. And it's nearly done. Oh, it looks good. We're really retro. We haven't changed a thing in this place since we opened in 65 in this location. Nothing has ever changed. Our sausage, our sauce, our dough, nada. <laughs> and it's always been thin and crisp. People enjoy that. I was told by my father, never ever vary the quality of the food, whether you have good times or you have bad times. Voila. We would never do it any other way. 
This is the only way. This is the way I was brought up. You do it the best way you can, and you keep it that way. Love you. I feel good inside, because I fulfilled a lot of the promises that I gave to my dad. It's a pizza that's been around for 50 years, at least crisp, crackery, thin crust. These like, just, you know, perfect amount of cheese, and they're so known for their seasoned sausage, and it changes your life. It was crisp, it was delicious. The sausage was, like you said, this kind of unique flavor. It was this kind of like sweet Italian sausage. There's a special one there, you can get an egg on it, but there's only a certain day you can get it. And um, maybe some garlic bread. It felt very much like a, a vibrant neighborhood place. You had a lot of people engaged and it reminded me more of places where I grew up in a small town working class environment and, and so that was a comfortable kind of environment. Great place you go, have a brew, have some whiskey, have some pizza, let loose, watch the game on TV and just have a good time. We were there for two and a half hours. I grew up really liking thin crust and so the thin crust definitely, uh, definitely worked very well for me and I thought it was really good crust. Every time I take a bite of it, I can't help but regret every single bite I've taken of another pizza that's not from Vito you know, Nick's. Well, chicken and waffles started in the South, and it was a common meal that was served in a lot of African-American homes. You can have chicken and waffles for breakfast, you can have chicken and waffles for lunch, we have chicken and waffles for dinner. We serve chicken and waffles all day. We sell uh, smothered chicken, we sell fried catfish, peach cobbler, sweet potato pie, you name it, we have it. Red beans and rice, all types of soul food. We try to give our customers a dining experience that is relaxing and enjoyable. They're like our family. Our customers are our family. <laughs> Life can be so stressful, but when they come here, we wanted to remind you of the good things in life. So, good food, good ambiance, good music, and just a good time. That's what it's all about at Chicago's Home with Chicken and Waffles. Got grits coming? I need grits. I haven't had a bad meal any time that I've gone there. I truly appreciate the place. Tell us about the concept of chicken with waffles. Well, chicken and waffles is, is like a southern tradition. You, you think of waffles for breakfast, but it's a good southern comfort food that you can have any time of the day. Yeah. I took my family. It's very family friendly. You can almost mm -hmm. bring anyone. Um, we, were, we felt very welcomed when we walked in. Even though it was a Wednesday night, there was a line forming quickly behind me. Um, unbelievable. Yeah. It was awesome. Uh, I've been thinking about it ever since we went there. We tried an omelet that came with diced fried chicken inside the omelet, which Ooh, was that's a the first. Rosemary. Yeah. Yes. And the sides were awesome. I loved them. The yams, the collard greens, the biscuits, the cornbread. We were fighting over them. They were just really, really good. Did you drive around a little bit? Check um, out the neighborhood? Uh, just a little bit. I mean, I haven't been there. I haven't been to that neighborhood previously, but, um, you know, it seems like a mix of the homes and, are just yeah, gorgeous. Uh, Bronzeville homes are like just jaw-droppingly gorgeous. They're really pretty and it seems like there's a lot of new construction in the area as well, so a nice mix of everything. Uh, Acadia was a region that is now Maine and it's just an homage to uh, about 12 or 13 summers of me spending in Maine. We have a lot of lobster, we do about 200 pounds of lobster a week. 90% of our lobster all comes from Maine and it's flown in every day. I have uh, known that I wanted to open a restaurant since about eighth grade. From the love of food and cooking and interest in what chefs have always been doing, I just knew I wanted to do a restaurant. All right, I got the first ticket, okay? Two dog venison salmon, duck venison. It's a passion, it's a love affair, and, and it's, it's half crazy. I mean, I live across the street, and I'm here probably 14 to 16 hours a day, even on days off. I just can't not be here. The 
The best compliment I get from diners is they feel like they've eaten in my home. And that's my goal. I'm not here to win awards. I'm not here to be a big celebrity famous chef. I just want to invite people into my home, provide hospitality. I've been to Maine, I've been to Acadia, so I already kind of like got that, but when I saw the lobster roll on the menu. And Chef Ryan actually brings in the buns from Maine. We actually were seated um, with a clear sight line into the kitchen, and I don't know if you've seen, their kitchen is gorgeous. It's a yes. beautiful restaurant. Gorgeous, yes. gorgeous. It's you know, it's, uh, their creative juices are flowing over there. It's like, it's like a well-oiled machine. Yeah. I mean, they yeah. line up. The service is ridiculously awesome. And this was like a team of people that come in and they come in and they, they swoop in to deliver your food. It was like synchronized swimming. Yes. Like they just, totally. they, you know, they would wait, they'd kind of look at each other and all put the plate down mm -hmm. at the exact same time. They serve like these little biscuits. Yeah. Oh, like in between oh the appetizer and the dinner and they're they're warm if they made those available like I just sit there and I mean on Sundays football hello and I even asked the server if you happen to have any of those laying around you know you know <laughs> maybe you can bring some more and he brought another order out and it was like oh my god that. I love you <laughs> the details I it's know. so pretty yeah you like I don't I just I want to take a picture I don't want to eat it I want to take a picture I did I took pictures of everything so that I was yeah. eating because yeah. I, was yeah. like, I don't know how I'm gonna be able to describe this to somebody Our journey through the South Side continues as a community organizer tells us why his Mexican spot is the tops for tacos in town. And operations manager takes us to Bridgeport for a truly unexpected find. And first, a web editor takes us for some seriously surprising South Side soul. The restaurant started 22 years ago as an offspring of the Black Hebrews. We are people dealing with holistic health and everlasting life. So it, it includes the mind, body, and spirit. And we did so many creative things with vegetarian cooking, we could not just keep this to ourselves, but we had to share it with others. It's a diverse crowd. Uh, we have people from all over the city of Chicago. Everything is uh, the way that your mom used to make it. Down home greens, cornbread, chili, dishes that everyone's used to. It just prepared without the oils and the fat. When we eat, as we bless our foods, we say bivracha. Uh, in Hebrew, which means blessings to you through your food. It's a, a whole spirit of longevity and goodness that comes with this. Vegans eat absolutely no animal products, mm -hmm. so cheese, uh, any dairy are out of the question. It was as exotic a uh, <clears throat> hour and a half as I've had in as long as I can remember. There was a, this <laughs> wonderful, wonderful mix of people. White, black, Hispanic, people mm -hmm. from the south side, people from the north side, yeah. old, young. Yeah. Every, you know, you have this, this, this statuesque waitress who come, came over. How are you, my love? Yes, yes. yes. How, I she called my her. husband love and I was like, hmm. This was this multicultural mm -hmm. kind of Rockwellian Steve, existence. You're, you're we had uh, chili and lentil soup to start off mm -hmm. with. Um, cornbread was great. And then I had uh, a Garvey burger. Uh, we also had falafel. Of all the so-called entrees was yeah. this greens dish. Mm. Oh, yeah. That oh, came with like wonderful. chopped tomato and stuff. Mm -hmm. I could have eaten a whole did plate like of that. Yeah, exactly. And the plus, the place is too <laughs> cheap for me. Yeah. It's like, I'm going, is this all? I need to pay more. See, and I'm all about the, the good food for cheap. <laughs> it was the overall experience for mm -hmm. me was so wonderful. It was, it was something that I wouldn't ordinarily do. And of all of these restaurants, this is the place that I will probably go back to more than any of the others. I'm very happy and I'm very great to serve to our customer and also I appreciate that our customer always give us the chance try different kind of food, never got a brand, always got to be, you know, support us. So that point is I want to strive to do my best. 
I want to do pretty simple menu and let people try different kind of cuisine. So we need to set up the soup, salad, appetizer, entry, and dessert is including different countries. The idea for that put together. Even though sometimes empty, sometimes just two table, I'm, but I still very happy to serve we are customer. The point is not make them really make money, just just let people know about more Chinese culture. Well, there won't be like egg foo young or you know <laughs> shrimp fried rice, nothing like that. It's a bit more upscale. It's different because it's a prefix menu. You get five courses, you get a soup, salad, appetizer, entree, and a dessert. I had uh, monkfish with black bean sauce presented just beautifully. The plates were gorgeous. I was surprised. I have been to Bridgeport, Bridgeport a million times and never knew it was there. So I couldn't believe just the location. And I had an incredible time. Like The food is amazing. It's got a little bit of like a, I'd say like modern French flair to it. Mm -hmm. So it's really like crisp and clean flavors and it's plated beautifully. I usually tell my single guy friends to take girls there on dates because you can bring a, <laughs> a great bottle of wine, your favorite bottle of wine that you like, and uh, the caliber of the food is such that where the girl won't really care that she won't think you're, she won't think you're a cheapskate or, you know, trying to save money. She'll think you just brought her there because it's a great atmosphere and the food's really good. I just think for the value and the quality of food, it's pretty much unmatched. 27 miles from our home, and we are going back. It was wonderful. <laughs> My father was uh, in the business. He had a taco stand in Guadalajara, Jalisco. Uh, so I grew up, you know, surrounded by seeing my father and my mother making delicious food. And when I came to the United States in 1968, I always had a dream of uh, getting into the food industry. I try to be different from others. There's more than one way to make a good salsa. I'm always searching for new ways of making things better. Well, definitely the steak tacos are the champions. Then we have the carne su jugo, which is a traditional dish from Guadalajara, Jalisco. And our steak uh, dinners are also popular. It makes me feel happy, because uh, this is what I wanted to do. I wanted people to talk about Tio Luis, remember Tio Luis, for uh, its great food and, and great service. To me, that's the most important thing. Closest thing to my mother's cooking that I have ever tasted. Uh, I'm not gonna go ahead and say it's better than my mom's cooking because I believe <laughs> my mom is the best cook ever. But um, being uh, again raised on Mexican food just about every single day, this is really the closest thing there is to home. So we ordered the ceviche, the empanadas, which are like a shrimp and seafood empanada, which were maybe my favorite thing on the menu. Um, and then we had the um, the chicken soup, the um, what is it? Pollo, caldo, caldo. caldo de pollo. Yeah, see. Sí. <laughs> and then, um, then we tried one each of the tacos. My favorite thing are the gorditas. Everything is done by hand. The ingredients are fresh. Their carne su jugo is uh, pretty much a bacon and steak broth. Very, very authentic Mexican taste. We did the gorditas, um, the cerizo, cerizo. Chorizo. Yes. Si. Si. Jeez. Phenomenal. 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 Yeah. I usually get yes. the chorizo gorditas um, as well. I do have to say, their, their mole, one of the best I've had. Very authentic, very, very authentic Mexican taste. We hope you've enjoyed our look back at some of the South Side's most talked about places. Don't forget to join us for more episodes of Check Please as we explore the dynamic and diverse restaurants throughout the Chicago area. Until then, I'm Catherine Diorio. Thanks for watching. For more information about the restaurants featured on Check Plays, go to wttw.com/checkplays.